Jack is a designer, but that's just one of his identities. He is obsessed with perfection to the point where he can't let go. He always wants to design houses with artistic beauty, but is never satisfied. One day, while driving, Jack encountered Jenny, who was seeking help due to a car breakdown. Jenny asked Jack to fix the broken Jack, and if he couldn't, she offered him a ride in return. Without waiting for Jack's consent, she got into the car. However, once Jenny got in the car, she started rambling and accused Jack of being a serial killer. She claimed that she was his target and that Jack could use the Jack to kill himself and dispose of the body in the wilderness. Throughout that journey, Jack was on the edge of rage. Finally, Jenny changed her tune and said Jack was too cowardly to be a serial killer. Jack reached his breaking point, grabbed the Jack, and violently struck Jenny. In that moment, Jack felt an unprecedented sense of relief and pleasure, as if a door to a new world had opened. Afterward, Jack dumped Jenny's car in the forest between jurisdictions and hid her body in the cold storage at home. Following this experience, Jack began actively killing. He targeted a solitary ant living alone, pretending to be a police officer investigating a case. Jack tricked the ant into letting him into her house. His story was full of mistakes and inconsistencies. It didn't have a badge or a police ant. Jack had to quickly change his story, claiming to work in insurance and promising to double the customer's retirement savings. The ant, enticed by the prospect of money, let her guard down and invited Jack inside. Jack is a designer, but that's just one of his alter egos. Zeke immediately pounced on the ant and strangled her to death as soon as he entered the house. Perhaps he was not adequately prepared for his first murder. As the ant didn't die immediately, Jack then delivered a final blow with a knife. He proceeded to wrap the body and place it in the trunk of his car, carefully cleaning any blood stains in the house. His severe OCD compelled him to repeatedly return and ensure the house was spotless. Before long, a police officer arrived. Catching Jack off guard, he quickly hid the body, although it appeared somewhat unnatural during the police questioning. Fortunately, the officers didn't notice anything suspicious. Finally, Jack tied the body to the back of his car and dragged it all the way to a refrigeration unit. However, to his horror, he discovered that the body's blood had leaked all over the place. But just then, a heavy rain shower came down and washed away the blood stains. In that moment, Jack felt as if even God was on his side. His anxious heart finally found relief. Gradually, Jack became more and more immersed in the act of killing. He even arranged the bodies like works of art, took photos, and sent them to the newspaper under the pseudonym Mr. Mysterious. Another time, Jack encountered a single mother with the children in the wilderness. His witty language won the affection of all three. The single mother even considered having Jack as a father figure for her children. However, to Jack, these three individuals were just his prey. So, like a hunter, he slowly cubed them and turned their bodies into a perfect piece of artwork. Zick is a designer, but that's just one of his alter egos. Zick had a romantic relationship at some point, but he also turned his lover into a lifeless body. He once told his girlfriend that he was a serial killer and had already killed 60 people. Naturally, she didn't believe him and thought Jack was lying. So Jack asked his girlfriend to take a marker pen and used it to prove his claim. He undressed his girlfriend and drew the circles on his chest, then cut them out. One circle was thrown on a police car, while the other was made into a wallet that he carried with him. There was another time when Jack suddenly wondered how many people's heads a fully metal bullet could penetrate. He captured individuals of different races and brought them to the refrigeration unit. He lined them up, but then the police arrived. Jack locked the door to the refrigeration unit and continued with his actions. At that moment, an unexpected old man appeared and stopped Jack. He asked Jack if he had always wanted to build a perfect house, but struggled with a lack of materials. The old man suggested that Jack use his favorite artistic material as the building material for the house. And for Jack, the most artistic material was those frowning bodies. So, Jack used all the bodies to construct a house. Then the old man entered the house, and Jack followed him inside. Unexpectedly, there was a portal to hell within the house. The old man led Jack to a broken bridge, with the other side leading to heaven. Below the broken bridge was a river of molten lava, a certain death if one fell into it. Thus, they needed to turn back. However, Jack asked, why not climb across these cliffs? They bid farewell, and Jack attempted to climb the cliffs alone, but he ended up falling to his death, never to be found in one piece. This is the story of karma not that it doesn't come, but that his time hasn't arrived. When retribution finally comes, it will be a hellish nightmare, so it's better to live as an ordinary person, peacefully and quietly. That's all for today. Stay tuned for the next installment.